Good morning, everybody. So um, my name is Meish, and just so that I'm not going to do something, I want to ask you also to help me for one second. If I were to give you four options, and I'll ask a show of hands, if you are a developer, if you're an operator, if you're both, or if you're neither. So developers in the room? Only developers. People which are only operators, people which are both or consider themselves as both, and people which consider themselves as none. OK, that's, that's interesting, because when I gave the original part of this talk approximately a year ago at the DevOps days in Tel Aviv, the amount of people which consider themselves DevOps people, both engineers, sorry, developers and operators, were approximately 10 out of four or 500. So devs are from um, Mars, operators are from Venus. I hope all of you know the book, Women Are From Mars, or Men Are From Mars, Women Are From Venus. When I read the book, I hope all of you also have also, also read the book, I um, understood that we speak completely different languages, men and women. And in order to understand each other, we have to understand how we talk to each other, how we communicate, and what we're talking about. Because if I say tomato and my wife says tomato, we won't understand what we're talking about. So DevOps is something which we all are hearing about, the whole of Cisco is going DevOps, Agile, and so on and so forth. But we are two completely different species and two different ways of communication. So I apologize, this is because I am from the operations world. It's going to be, from my perspective, it could be completely wrong, but this is the way that I see things. What do developers care about? They are, I have the utmost respect, and I know that they do amazing things, and they know how to make software and create things from absolutely nothing. They know how to make, make things work together from a piece of paper or an idea that somebody has in their head. They know how to write software very, 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 very well, and they know how to get things to work together. But when they get things to work together, not necessarily is what an operator would think is this is the way it should work. Because it does work, but not necessarily will be something which can be viable in production. <laughs> Operators, what do they care about? They care about not getting woken up at 2.36 in the morning or 2.56 in the morning because I would like to sleep at night and I don't want to get woken up by all the alerts coming into my phone. Like things which are stable, which are working properly. They like things that are working smoothly and running like a baby's bottom. Some people don't really understand from a developer perspective what your operators and infrastructure people need to do in order to get everything running smoothly. They have to juggle a huge amount of things to keep things up and running the whole time, and it's not easy. So remember that as well. Just writing code also has an infrastructure part at the back, at the back of it as well. What kind of terminology do developers use? They use things like sprints and scrum. Then we're not talking about the parts of rugby. We're talking about things we should release and so on and so forth on the list. But my favorite, of course, is Kanban. If you would ask an operator or introduce them to Kanban, you would probably get something very, very similar to this. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of terminology do operators use? They talk about infrastructure, and we're not talking about the software. We're talking about what kind of requirements from the infrastructure part, part that I need, how much CPU, how much RAM, what kind of resources I'm going to need in order to run this. Do I have some kind of change management in order for you in place in order to make changes to your code if I need them and how that's going to be done? Are your things highly available so that, again, I don't get the calls at 2.56 in the morning because your application went down? And of course, who's going to support the whole thing? Because just writing the code and giving it to somebody else does not necessarily mean that as an operator or somebody else, I can actually support these things. <clears throat> that could be redundancy. It still works, but again, for how long? And not necessarily the best way to be done. What is definition of done? Something which you hear a lot as a developer. It could be something which gets whatever I define it to be, not necessarily what it actually should be in the end. It works in some kind of an environment, but not necessarily will work in another environment, yes or no. What is definition of done from an operator perspective? I would see it as the fact that the software works and it's stable. I don't have to get those alerts again at 2.56 in the morning because the CPU spiked. I know how to back it up, I know how to restore it, and also over multiple locations if I need to, because that's what my part of the infrastructure needs to be doing. I need to also uh, be, be responsible for the business continuity. Things have to be highly available, of course, and there are some defined thresholds in order for me to act and react on certain things which happen within your software. Unfortunately, today, a good amount of our projects look exactly like this. Somebody writes code and passes it over, and then hopes for the best. I sincerely hope 
that slowly but surely we're starting to understand that's not the way we can sustain our software and the way we do our business because it doesn't really work that way. Um, a gentleman by the name of John Vincent, this is his quote, and I'm going to go over it. This is what I have really, this resonated with me. What is DevOps? This is the secret. I'll tell you exactly what DevOps means. DevOps means giving, and he's also very verbal and sometimes crude, but anyway, it gives, a, it gives a hoot about what your job is enough in order for you to not pass the buck. DevOps means giving enough about your job in order to want to learn all the parts, not only your small little world. Developers need to understand infrastructure. Operations people also have to understand code. People need to start working with each other and not occupying space next to each other. This is DevOps from what I see. Um, the reason, of course, as I said, I agree with this statement which I'm wearing at the moment. What we here at DevOps are supposed to be doing is we're supposed to be breaking silos. Well, we also have to, one, one thing which I also understood yesterday as well, we also have to take into account that we don't make another silo as DevOps itself. Because once we make the fact that we have at the moment developers and we have operators, and we make it silo of DevOps people only without sharing that knowledge and giving back to everybody else, we'll create another third silo in the future, which also could be problematic for us. Two or three links. You can find me on Twitter. I'm there all the time. The full version of this talk, which was more or less 30 minutes, so I'm sorry, this was very, very, very condensed, can be also found on the link. And thank you very much for your time.